One of the most beloved Christmas songs initially flopped for a tragic reason. And then there was another one that's just had a really great full circle moment. And all of these stories really got me thinking about the fascinating tales behind some of our most favorite Christmas songs. This beloved song was initially released on November 22nd, 1963. And yes, that was the exact day President JFK was assassinated. And out of respect for this terrible event, the song was pulled from shelves and from airplay immediately. And that song was Christmas, Baby Please Come Home, sung by Darlene Love. It was the lead single off of a future classic Christmas album, A Christmas Gift For You from Phil Spector. And if you don't already know, Phil Spector was an interesting character to say the least and eventually got into some other hot water. I just invite you to Google with caution if you don't know the stories. But in happier news, the album was re-released in 1972 and that's when it started to gain traction. And then in the 80s had a big resurgence when David Letterman started inviting Darlene Love to come and perform the song on on his show every year for Christmas. And this went on for a really long time up to shortly before David Letterman's retirement. And eventually Darlene went on to give the song new life on a new show, which was The View. And just recently at the Love for the Holidays concert, just last Thursday from the time of filming this video, Christmas Baby Please Come Home celebrated its 60th anniversary with a three times platinum certification by the RIAA as of April 7th, 2023. Most of the songs that we consider holiday classics were penned well over 40 years ago and this particular song was written in 1994 and that is All I Want For Christmas Is You by Mariah Carey. And whether you love it or hate it, it is a well-crafted piece that has stood the test of time and stood right next to all the other holiday classics and it was inspired by Phil Spector's wall of sound style of production. And she even does a little callback to this in her music video, giving a sort of a Ronettes feel in her look. Tommy Mottola, who was the head of the record label at the time and her former husband, mentioned in his memoir that he was afraid such a nostalgic gesture would sort of hurt her credibility in the hip-hop world. But good thing she did it anyway because the song went on obviously to be a huge success. And later on in her 2020 memoir, she talks about how the song really came from her longing for that kind of Christmas when she was a child. And of course you add the iconic voice that is Mariah's and boom, there you have a Christmas smash. Not only the top selling holiday track of all time, but it is also estimated by the Guinness Book of World Records to be one of the best selling songs, period. And that is White Christmas, originally sung by Bing Crosby. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm obsessed with this movie. I watch it every year because I absolutely think it's just iconic. But it was actually originally performed 13 years before it came out on the radio show Craft Music Hall. And then in the 1942 film Holiday Inn. The story goes that Irving Berlin wrote the song in 1940 while staying at a La Quinta Inn. And he told his secretary after writing it over the weekend, I want you to take down a song I wrote over the weekend. Not only is it the best song I ever wrote, it's the best song anybody ever wrote. With estimated sales surpassing 50 million copies, I mean, the runner up Elton John's Candle in the Wind was behind by roughly 17 million copies. That kind of success proved that secular Christmas songs could in fact become huge smash hits it's written by a Jewish immigrant to the United States. It's gone on to be included in countless lists of one of the 100 most important songs of all time. This next song was almost lost to obscurity because of a last minute alteration to its lyrics. And that is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, sung by Judy Garland. When songwriter Hugh Martin initially presented the piece to the iconic Judy Garland for performance in the 1944 film Meet Me in St. Louis, she objected to the lines that would have portrayed her character saying harsh things to her seven year old sister about the holiday season. And so Garland's objection led to changes in the lyrics and the line sung, Faithful friends who are dear to us may be near to us no more, which was a little bleak. It eventually turned into faithful friends who are dear to us gather near to us once more. The song has gone on to be covered by so many different people and I'm really glad that Hugh Martin went on to update those lyrics so it could go on to become one of my personal favorite Christmas songs of all time. This joyful tune proved that a song with lyrics in both English and Spanish could not only become a huge hit but live on every Christmas for decades, and that is Feliz Navidad by Jose Feliciano. Now this one has an interesting story because Jose talks about writing the song when he was in a studio in Los Angeles and he was really homesick, missing his family back in New York City. And he was really, really longing for that and wanted to write a song that captured that essence. Bridging two cultures, Jose Feliciano created one of the most beautiful hits of his career with the 1970 release of Feliz Navidad. So while trying to capture that essence with his Spanish lyrics, Feliciano wanted to make sure that he was still able to get airplay on English radio stations and sang the verses in 
English, but it really did take the song a while to gain some traction. And it wasn't until 2020 that the song made top 10 for the very first time. And I think it had a lot to do with the cultural shifts, the shifts in music, the wider acceptance of bilingual songs, and even full Spanish language songs on the American Billboard charts. Regardless of its journey, it is a song that's near and dear to so many of us, and it's beautiful to see so many people of so many different cultures singing along to Prospero Año y Felicidad. This classic Christmas song was actually written during a sweltering summer in 1945. The Christmas song sung by Nat King Cole. Songwriter Robert Wells, thinking cool as recounted by his writing partner, the renowned singer Mel Torme, crafted what would later become one of the most performed winter-themed songs of all time, according to BMI. And although not the first to perform it, the Nat King Cole trio were the first to record the initial version. He eventually recorded four different renditions, the 1961 version being the one most cherished among fans. The song that was originally performed by one of the youngest singers to ever deliver a holiday classic, and that is Brenda Lee, who sang Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. And of course, it always makes me think of Home Alone and that scene where he's got all all the cardboard cutouts sort of uh, you know going around the, the dining room pretending to have a party <laughs> but what's so amazing about this song is that brenda was only 13 years old at the time of recording it penned by johnny marks the same songwriter behind seasonal standards like a holly jolly christmas and rudolph the red-nosed reindeer the song gained traction after lee's breakthrough with number one hits in 1960. it has maintained its appeal just a week ago from the time of filming this brenda lee celebrated yet another milestone reaching the number one one billboard spot for the first time in 65 years. She is the oldest artist to reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Another holiday song that also took a while to reach success, This Christmas by Donny Hathaway. Mm. I love the song. The songwriter Nadine McKinner was working at a Chicago post office at that time. She caught the attention of Donny Hathaway through her boyfriend who was working with the star at the time. Hathaway was so impressed by her lyrics that he went ahead and fleshed out the music. It didn't really reach a wider audience until later. Then in 1991, Atco Records revised their edition of their 1968 Soul Christmas compilation album, and the song since has become a modern Christmas standard. In fact, the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers reported that it was in fact the 30th most performed holiday song of all time. The song that was expected to be a number one hit before it was released, but sadly the first time did not quite make it there. But there's a good explanation. Last Christmas by Wham, written by George Michael. Andrew Ridgely revealed that he and George Michael were hanging out at George's parents' house, TV was in the background, and all of a sudden George disappears, and he's upstairs for about an hour or so. And apparently when he comes down, he has this look as if he had just discovered gold, which in a sense, Andrew says, well, he had, because he had just written an interesting take on a holiday classic, because it was actually a tale of betrayed love. So George claims that he had this knack for knowing when he had written a number one, and he really felt that when he wrote this particular song. However, at the same time, Band-Aid released Do They Know It's Christmas After All? And well, that was the song that ended up stealing the number one spot that year. Fret not because in 2021, the song grabbed its much deserved number one spot. I'm glad he had that stroke of genius in his old bedroom back in the 80s because it is a Christmas classic that I cannot live without. I hope you guys enjoyed these stories as much as I did. If you want to watch more videos, you can check them out over here and I'll see you next time.